This is the RCOG guideline which was published in March 2007. So, the first important point which is written in this guideline is that what information should be given to the woman with a breach presentation at term? Okay, the answer is that we have to tell them about the importance of the ECV. Okay, woman with a breach presentation at the term should be offered external cephalic version unless there is an absolute contraindication and they should be advised on the risk and benefit of ECV and the implication for the mode of the delivery. Now, there are certain women, certain group of women who have breach presentation but either they decline the offer of ECV or they have unsuccessful ECV. So what counseling should be done for them? We should counsel them about the risk and benefit of planned vaginal breach delivery versus planned cesarean section. Now, what information about the baby should be given to these women with breech presentation at term regarding the mood of delivery? Okay, about this, women should be informed that the plant cesarean suction leads to a small reduction in the perinatal mortality compared with the planned vaginal breech delivery. And any uh, decision to perform the cesarean suction needs to be balanced against the potential adverse consequences that may result from it. Now, women should be informed about the uh, cause of the reduced risk. Okay, the reduced risk is due to three factors. First of all, uh, avoidance of the stillbirth after 39 weeks of gestation. Secondly, the avoidance of the intrapartum risk and the risk of vaginal breech birth. And that the only last one is unique to the breech delivery. And the risk should also be told to the woman. Women should be informed that the, uh, when planning delivery for breech baby, the risk of perinatal mortality is approximately 0.5 per thousand. With cesarean suction after 39 weeks of gestation, is 0.5 per thousand but it is approximately 2 per thousand with a planned vaginal breech birth and this compares approximately 1 per thousand with a planned cephalic birth now the important thing is that selection of appropriate pregnancies and skilled intrapartum care may allow planned vaginal breech birth to be nearly as safe as planned vaginal cephalic birth and women should be informed that the planned vaginal breech birth increases the risk of the low APGAR score and serious short-term complications, but has not been shown to increase the risk of long-term morbidity. Clinicians should counsel the woman in an unbiased way that ensures a proper understanding of the absolute as well as relative risk of their different options. Now, what information should women having breech birds be given about their own immediate and future health? Women should be informed that the planned cesarean suction for breech presentation at term carries a small increase in immediate complication for the mother compared with the planned vaginal births. And women should be informed that the maternal complications are least with successful vaginal births. Planned cesarean suction carries a higher risk. But the risk is highest with emergency cesarean suction which is needed in approximately 40% of the women planning a vaginal breech birth. Women should also be informed that cesarean suction increases the risk of complications in the future pregnancy including the risk of opting for vaginal birth after cesarean suction. The increased risk of complications at repeat cesarean suction and the risk of abnormally invasive placenta. And women should be given an individualized assessment of the long-term risk of cesarean suction based on their individual risk profile and reproductive in intentions and counsel accordingly. What information should women having breech births be given about the health of the future babies? The answer is that women should be informed that cesarean suction has been associated with a small increase in the risk of stillbirth for subsequent babies, although this may not be casual. Now, what factors affect the safety of vaginal pressure delivery? We need to do proper assessment antenatal assessment in order to reply this question. Following the diagnosis of persistent breach presentation, women should be assessed for the risk factor for a poorer outcome in the planned vaginal breach birth. 
if any risk factor is identified women should be counseled that the planned vaginal birth is likely to be associated with increase in perinatal risk and that delivery by cesarean induction is recommended and women should be informed that the highest risk of the planned vaginal breech birth is expected where there are independent indications for cesarean induction in the following circumstances first of all there is hyperextended neck on ultrasound second the high estimated fetal weight of more than 3.8 kg or low estimated fetal weight of less than 10 centile foot link presentation and evidence of antenatal fetal compromise and very important another thing is that the rule of pelvimetry is unclear another important thing is that the skill and experience of the birth attendant is also very important the presence of a skilled birth attendant is essential for the safe vaginal bridge birth and units with limited access to the experienced personnel should inform women that vaginal bridge birth is likely to be associated with a greater risk and offer antenatal referral to a unit where skill level and experience are greater Now coming to the intrapartum assessment and management of women presenting and plan with a breech presentation in the labor. Now when a where a woman presents with an unplanned vaginal breech labor, management should depend on the stage of the labor, whether factors associated with increased complications are found or not, availability of appropriate clinical expertise and staff uh, informed consent. Women near or in active second stage of the labor should not be routinely offered cesarean section and there is importance of ultrasound as well where time and circumstances permit the position of the fetus neck and leg and the fetal weight should be estimated using ultrasound and the woman counsel with a plan which i have preach birth all maternity units must be able to provide skill superior for vaginal breech birth where a woman is admitted in advance labor and protocols for the eventuality should be developed what is appropriate intrapartum management of the term breech or induction and augmentation appropriate the answer is that women should be informed that the induction of the labor is usually not recommended and augmentation of the slow progress with oxytocin should only be considered if the contraction frequency is low in the presence of epidural analgesia now what is the role of epidural analgesia women should be informed that the effect of epidural analgesia on the success of vaginal breech birth is unclear but that is likely to increase the risk of intervention what fetal monitoring should be recommended women should be informed that while evidence is lacking continuous electronic fetal monitoring may lead to improved neonatal outcomes where should vaginal breech birth take place birth in a hospital with the facilities for immediate cesarean section should be recommended with planned vaginal breech birth but birth in an operating theater is not usually recommended what guidelines should be in place for the breech birth women should be informed that adherence to the protocol for the management reduces the chance of the early neonatal morbidity and the essential components of the planned vaginal breech birth are appropriate case selection management according to the strict protocol and availability of the skilled attendants management of the first and passive second stage adequate descent of the breech in the passive second stage is a prerequisite for encouragement of the active second stage now what position should the woman be in for delivery during a vaginal breech birth either a semi recumbent or an all four position should be adopted for delivery and should depend on the maternal preference and experience of the attendant if the later position is used women should be advised that the recourse to risk semi recumbent position may become necessary what are the principles for the management of the active second stage and which on the breech part okay assistance without traction is required if there is delay or evidence of the poor fetal condition and all obstetrician 
and midwives should be familiar with the techniques that may be used to assess the vaginal breech birth. The choice of the maneuver used if required to assist the delivery of the breech should depend on the individual experience, preferences of the attending doctor or midwife. Now coming to the management of the preterm breech. What should preterm singleton babies in the breech presentation be delivered? Sorry, how should, sorry, how should uh, preterm singleton babies in the breech presentation be delivered? About this, women should be informed that the routine cesarean section for the breech presentation in spontaneous preterm labor is not recommended and the mode of the delivery should be individualized based on the stage of the labor, the type of the breech presentation, fetal well-being and availability of an operator skilled in vaginal breech delivery. Women should be informed that cesarean section for the breech presentation in spontaneous preterm labor at the threshold of viability 22 to 20 five plus six weeks of gestation is not really, uh, routinely recommended and women should be informed that the plant's cesarean suction is recommended for preterm breach presentation where delivery is planned due to maternal and or fetal compromise and how should the labor with single term preterm breach be managed Labor with a preterm breach be managed as with a term breach, but the head entrapment is a main problem. Where there is head entrapment, in CN in the cervix, vaginal birth, or vertical uterine in CN extension, cesarean suction, may be used with or without tocolysis. Now coming to the management of the twin pregnancy with a breach presentation. How should a first twin in the breach presentation be delivered? Women should be informed that the evidence is limited, but the plan cesarean suction for the twin pregnancy where the presenting twin is breech is recommended. And a routine emergency cesarean suction for the breech first twin in spontaneous labor, however, is not recommended. The mode of the delivery should be individualized based on the cervical dilatation, station of the presenting part, the type of the breech presentation, the fetal well-being and the availability of an operator skill in the vaginal breech delivery. Now, how should a second twin in breach presentation be delivered. Routine cesarean suction for the breach presentation of a second twin is not recommended in either term or preterm delivery. Now, what organizational and governance arrangement should be in place to support a routine vaginal breach delivery service? The first thing is that of simulation equipment. Simulation equipment equipment should be used to rehearse the skills that are needed during the vaginal breech birth by all doctors and midwives. So proper training is essential. Second is guidance for the case selection and management of the vaginal breech birth should be developed in each department by the healthcare professionals who supervise each birth. And adherence to the guidance is recommended to reduce the risk of intrapartum complications. And the last important thing is that the departments should consider developing a checklist to ensure comprehensive counseling of the woman regarding plan mode of delivery for the babies presenting by the bridge. Okay, so this is all about the guideline.